Okay, perfect. So thank you for having me here today. I'm so thrilled to talk about um, how to start a, a Rotaract club. And I'm going to look at it from different people's roles. And what I tried to do is have some visuals as well, so you can get a sense of our Rotaract club. So the first thing I want to talk about is what, a, what is the Rotarian's role? And I'm going to talk about both a Rotaract club that's within a university or college, and then a Rotaract club that's outside of a university, because we know that a Rotaract club does not have to be within a university. Okay, So the Rotarian's role is first within your Rotary club to form um, a committee, a Rotaract committee really important that within that committee someone takes the leadership role um, to be that advisor or liaison between the club and the Rotaract um, club that will be formed. Extremely important. We need to begin to identify some potential Rotaractors, so it's really good that whoever is in that leadership role of that Rotary um, advisor really has some kind of connection with youth or has people that they can network to get a sense of is there a need are people interested in having a, a Rotaract club. You want to invite some prospective members to an information meeting and what you have to do to be able to really start a Rotaract club, university or community base, is to have about 15 charter members. So there is a threshold of the number of members that you need. So what's the Rotaractors role? We're going to talk about theirs as well. They're going to hold this organizational meeting, right? So now we know that there's 15 people that are interested, at least 15 people. Uh, again, the Rotary advisor is still there working with the Rotaractors as they get organized. Um, we all have the ability to, to look at the Rotaract handbook, which is fabulous. Um, you can easily down, download that to get all of what I'm sharing with you now. What's important with the Rotaractors is to really understand um, some of the constitutional documents. They need to hold elections, and I'm going to go over all the roles of the different um, executive board members, because that's really crucial. To be successful as a Rotaract club, you really have to have strong leadership in these um, executive roles. Um, extremely important. They're going to establish some annual uh, club dues. Doesn't have to be a lot of money, um, but you know they need to have some kind of dues coming in. They need to plan their meetings at least twice a month and plan activities. And one thing that my club has been doing, the Rotaract Club that I helped start many many years ago is that we alternate having executive board meetings one week and then having the general Rotaract meetings the next week. So back and forth. The communication is extremely uh, important. There's a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, there's, there is paperwork that you have to complete. Um, what's really good is that we get reminders um, a lot of times to do that. And I thank Carl for some of the reminders because sometimes we forget too. Um, there is a $50 um, registration fee, organizational fee, and typically the sponsoring Rotary Club assists in that regard. And when I first started the Rotaract Club um, at Boston University, we were um, sponsored by the Woburn Club. Um, I was an Andover Rotarian at the time. Rotary Clubs, and it may have changed, but I don't think so, were only allowed to sponsor one Rotaract Club. And the Andover Club had already sponsored the Merrimack Rotaract Club. So we had to look for another club within our district, and Woburn um, said that they would sponsor us. Um, but we didn't have a real connection with them. So it's really important to make sure that the Rotary Club has a really strong connection with the Rotaract Club. And when I moved to the Boston Brookline area, our club was adopted by the Brookline Rotary Club and that made all the difference because then we had that f liaison there I was a member of that club so that's really crucial very crucial to make sure that there's that big connection between both um, you plan an inaugural um, ceremony 
very important to invite the Rotary Club to be there. Um, they may help with sponsoring. Again, you're getting to see some pictures um, of our Rotaract Club and some of the activities that, that they have done as well over the years. So there's a board of directors, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and then there's club committees. I'm going to go over the board of directors because they're very important. We call it the e-board, executive board um, in, in BU Rotaract language here. There are club committees. These are the ones that Rotary recommends. Um, the service club, the community service, international professional development, finance committees. We actually have found that we have other ones that we have put together depending on what is happening. Um, we helped sponsored a gift of life child three times through the Brookline Rotary Club. So we had a committee that did gift of life. So it ebbs and flows depending on what, what your club needs. So roles and responsibilities of the executive board, very important. I have to say all of the members of the executive board are important, but the president is crucial. And you need somebody who um, has a vision and a commitment to the Rotary um, vision and mission, um, someone who really understands um, Rotary. Um, this person needs to I believe, have really good organizational and time management skills. Now, obviously, you, you can't necessarily have that in every president, but it does make it much easier to run the Rotaract Club if you have someone like that. They chair the meetings. Um, they appoint all standing and special committee meetings, um, but uh, committee people. And typically, it's a board that's doing some of the voting on that too. So it's not the president making unilateral decisions. You want it to be a team that's, that's um, committed together. Another role for the president, and I think the Rotaract um, or Rotary advisor, what's crucial is to mentor the executive board, but specifically the president. Um, learning how to delegate is crucial. I think all of us need to do that, but in this role, in this leadership role, helping to mentor them to develop skills like delegating is crucial and prioritizing. And you're getting some pictures of some of our um, uh, Rotaract members here. Vice President really helps support the president. If the president isn't there, um, he or she would run the meetings. Um, some clubs have incoming presidents serve as vice presidents. Um, we haven't done that, but there's a lot of merit to doing that. Um, and I, you know, I would suggest that you might consider that as well. Um, the only issue with that is that you wouldn't have, if you're um, working with undergraduates, you wouldn't have a senior in that vice president's role if you're doing it in this way because they'd be graduating. Um, they preside, again, over meetings, and they work with um, the board of directors and um, members of, of all the committees as well. Secretary um, maintains all the club records. Again, having really good organizational skills is important, but there's a lot of technology out there that can help. Um, using Google Docs seems to be a really great way of doing that because everybody can see the information. Um, making sure the dues are paid, making sure the budget, notifying um, the sponsoring Rotary Club, um, especially when people are turning 30. And so then again, remember when they turn 30, they would no longer be eligible, um, after they turn 30, eligible to be a, a Rotaracker. They could be, again, a Rotarian. Um, they need to update every six months, and I think that's probably where we have some of the issues. Like a lot of Rotaract clubs, sometimes including our own, forget that we have to keep updating the paperwork. Um, and so that kind of reminder, the secretary would be the person that could do that. And they take minutes. Treasurer chairs the finance committee and um, collects the membership dues. Um, helps make sure that all the fundraising projects are taken care of. Depending on if you are a university-based 
or college-based Rotaract Club, you may have to um, intersect with the university policies. Like for all of our fundraising at Boston University, we have to hand that money into um, the Boston University Finance for Student Clubs, and then we draw the money out of that. And that you've got to check if that's something you have to do. And I don't know if the other Rotaractors have to do that. Um, it's a check and balance, and I think it's okay. Again, some of being on this executive board that's really exciting is you're really developing skills for life um, and that's a really great role I think for for the treasurer um, roles and responsibilities of the Rotary Club Rotarian advisors and faculty they sponsor the Rotaract Club um, they're a Rotarian advisor and again university-based clubs would have um, that faculty advisor I wanted to share this with you um, everybody familiar with Gift of Life? Yeah, I think so, just about. Is there anybody who isn't familiar with Gift of Life? Okay, so Gift of Life is a rotary project where we have children who need heart surgery come over to the United States. Typically the hospital will donate um, the cost of the surgery and the stay in the hospital, and then the Rotary Club or the Rotaract Club pays for um, living expenses, food, everything, and is there to support them. Um, we have done three children, and this was our first child, um, Melvin. He was our first gift of life child. And I remember meeting him at the airport, probably had maybe a week, two weeks to live. Um, if he didn't have the surgery, he would not be around. And I remember seeing him and his eye, the white of his eyes were completely yellow. He was so ill. He was in a wheelchair. Um, the Rotaract Club helped raise money with the Brookline Rotary Club. There's a certain threshold of money that you have to have. Um, Melvin um, was given, and his mom, free housing at Boston University for the whole duration of the stay that he was here. Melvin's now... 19 years old. We follow each other on Facebook. Um, he has a girlfriend. Um, he'd love to come to Boston University and be a doctor. Um, I can't help him that way. He's going to have to apply. Um, and he calls me his Boston mom. Um, the Rotorackers worked with him. It's a great project, but my point in sharing this, this narrative with you is that it's really important to get projects that resonate with students. Extremely important. When you have that, the students will come. And one of the things that you had mentioned um, my, my, um, was how do you get members when you're competing with so many other programs at universities? And I'm totally convinced that a lot of it has to do, of course, with service above self, but also getting projects that resonate with the students. And uh, Gift of Life was an incredible anchor for our, our program. Um, the sponsoring Rotary Club um, invites the Rotaractors to club meetings. And our Brookline Club is always, always supportive of having Rotaractors there. If there's a meal, of course, the Rotaractors wouldn't pay for the meal. They would be the host. They'd have the be, um, um you know, given that free meal, but more importantly, I think they're so welcome and asked to, if they could, to speak a little bit about what projects they're doing. Um, they participate in club events. Oh, actually, this little child here was our third um, gift of life child, Diego, and his mom and dad, Carol, you'd appreciate it, lived with me in my apartment for six weeks um, at Boston University. I live in a dormitory at BU. So they were with me in, my, in the dorm, which was great because all the students could be there. Um, again, uh, one of the things that's really important um, as a Rotary Club is to try to have projects and activities that you can bring your um, students into. And the Brookline Rotary Club has quite a few exciting events. And I think one of the ones that the students love um, is Pancake Breakfast. Um, where they come and they help out, and I think they get to see Rotarians in, in action, which helps them, I think, feel more motivated as well. Uh, Rotarian advisor 
as really the link between the Rotary Club and um, the Rotaract Club. And that person needs to have a commitment and I think a love for working with students. That's extremely important. They attend Rotaract meetings and they stay in touch with the Rotaract Board of Directors. I'm very lucky because the Rotaract Club meets in my college at, at Boston University. Um, uh, in fact, the Executive Board, Board of Directors meets in my office when we don't have meetings. Opening that up, giving those resources are really important. Um, faculty advisor, again, university ones, it's typically a faculty member, um, advises club members, acts as a liaison. So again, if we don't have um, a university-based club, it's really important for that Rotary um, advisor to the Rotaract to try to get to as many meetings as possible and to be a resource um, for the, the Rotaractors. So I think I answer questions now, is that right? Or should Two, and then should I put, I, I went over my time because the next one's going to be very quick. While you're doing that, I'm going to put the next sure. one. Sure. And then um, any other questions, you can write them down and we'll answer them at the end. Okay. Can I answer any questions? Do you have any questions? Karen, Emily, Emily has a question. You mentioned that all Rotaract clubs are held at colleges. No, no, I didn't say that. No. Okay. There's two kinds. So it can be a Rotaract club at a university or college, yep. or it can be community. Okay, so how do you start up in the community? Well, again, you need to have connect. Want me to come over here? Um, so you need to have, I suggest that whoever is that Rotary Committee advice, the one when we start that Rotaract um, club organization within the Rotary Club, that it be someone who's connected with the community. Okay. Um, they could be someone who's a teacher, but someone who can network and reach um, students. Okay, so it depends on, on the person, but someone who actually is able to get to those uh, people in the community. Yes. And let me add, a lot of clubs think they can't have a Rotaract club because they don't have a college in their yeah, that's area, not. but that's not true not because true. you can have a community-based. And there are many advantages of community-based because the people don't leave after four years. Yeah, and it's really good. So some of our Rotaractors moved into the community-based one um, because they graduated from school. They didn't see, actually, one of our presidents who's very active now in uh, Maryland uh, in Rotary didn't see um, as much of a, uh, a connection with the college students anymore and then moved on to that and was very successful with it. Yeah. Blake has yeah. a question. have you done at sure. uh, BU that, yeah. uh, that have really attracted students to your club? It seems to be anything that we do related to children. Okay. So, um, and I don't know if this would be anything of interest. Um, we um, had crocheting where we crocheted um, little caps for babies um, in, in South America. So we were crocheting, knitting, um, for weeks and weeks and weeks because the students could envision that these babies in hospitals in South America were going to have these little caps when they were born. Um, and then we'd, we'd get pictures of that. Um, I think if we get a project that there's a person that's really excited about it, then that sort of gets everybody going. So we've done hippotherapy. Um, students were doing uh, therapeutic horseback riding. They actually went to um, a farm out in Andover, mm -hmm. and they were working with kids there. Um, the, the, the kid connection seems to work best for us. Okay. Um, and that's, again, we're housed at Sargent College, which is Health and Rehabilitation Sciences. Um, so a lot of our members have been from that college, but that's not necessarily you know, the case all the time. But they seem to be interested in, in helping people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. If there any other questions, write them down, we'll answer them at the end. And we, we've talked about networking, networking with Rotary Clubs, networking with other Rotaract Clubs. There are many ways of networking that's made easy for us. Uh, in May, there's a district conference. Every governor has a district conference where you have an opportunity to learn more about Rotary, learn more about projects that are going on, and also have a lot of fun. 
And that's something you might want to put on your calendar.